Green One Lesson Seven Lecture. 전화번호가 어떻게 되세요? May I have your phone number? It's not a direct translation, but um, I'll explain that as we um, go on on how to request phone numbers uh, in this lesson. Lesson seven, first grammar, the subject focus marker Ika. We're going to um, review um, what the purpose of um, the subject marker is Ika and the, its usage. Subject is a noun that is doing or being something. Um, when we say doing something, we might think something that is very active, but it can be a process like thinking, sleeping. Subject is what's actually doing something, um, being linked to the copula is, um, or being described. Subject could be what the sentence is about, but not necessarily. Because in the sentence, the postman, the dog bit him. Uh, the postman is what the sentence is about, but he's not doing anything. It's the dog that is the subject. You see how this is an unusual sentence. You have the postman first to make you pay attention to the object of the sentence. But um, the subject of the sentence is the dog. The dog. Uh, does the action of biting. You use E after a noun that ends in consonant, as in 핸드폰이 없어요, 배그리 맛있어요. 가, uh, if the noun uh, that is the subject ends in a vowel, 친구가 전화해요, your friend uh, makes a phone call, um, 한국어가 어려워요, Korean language is difficult. When you want to make the first person pronoun into a subject, you say 내가 or 제가. The difference is um, try to use 제가. It's much more polite, modest, and humble. It's more adult-like. You use 내가, which is the plain form, with somebody who is um, your peer or junior. Uh, somebody you... I kind of agreed on the speaking in a very casual matter, like you had discussed this. Um, so, you know, you, if acquaintances, if you're still acquaintance level with somebody, please use uh, 제가 to refer to yourself as the subject. As in 내가 공부해요 versus 제가 공부해요. Um, kids, because they haven't quite learned um, the honorific, um, when they talk about themselves, they say 내가, 내가, or 나는 for um, first person topic. So you, you don't want to sound very unadult like. Um, and yeah, referring to oneself to be polite, you use uh, 제가. And this is not humble uh, form, humble horrific is um, a concept where you elevate somebody else by. Uh, lowering your oneself. So it's um, still used with people who are older, but it's not about them, but it's about you, how you uh, humble yourself. So thereby um, still respecting the other person, the listener. In negative equation expression, if you remember, the formula is you have the topic, and then the second thing that you are saying it's not equal to, and then the subject marker and 아니에요. 저는, as for me, 미국 사람이 아니에요. As for me, so you are the topic of the sentence, and something that is not being is, uh, that is not equal to is American person. As for me, um, American person is what is not. Okay, I know that sounds very complicated, but it's just that things are in different order. Okay, um, and um, 일본 사람 이름은, um, as for the Japanese person's name, Sophia ga aniyo. Sophia is what it's not. Okay, American person is what it's not. Okay, um, so even if it's a very short sentence, you have, um, you know, 
several uh, elements here, which are topic and subject to distinguish what are we talking about? What is something that is not being uh, equal to or being equated to? At this point, don't worry too much where we are. We are going to um, come back to this. The three most important markers or the particles, the subject, topic, object over and over again. But for now, um, we want you to distinguish when to use um, e versus ka. If the word ends in a uh, consonant, you uh, use um, e, otherwise ka. And often I ask, well, when do you use e ka versus unnen versus ullul, uh, especially e ka versus unnen? Um, the subject marker versus uh, topic. And the answer is it's not that it's correct or wrong uh, in certain contexts. It depends on what you want to express. Um, you know, the, it, the usages are such that you, you have to know what you want to say before uh, the correct usage. So for 선생님, it ends in a consonant. So to say it's not, it's not a teacher, 선생님, E or ka, you guys. E, 아니에요. 학생, E or ka. Ends in an e hung, so it's 학생, E, 아니에요. 수지, 씨. Ends in vowel. She ends in a vowel, so 수지, 씨. 가, 아니에요. 일본 사람, ends in consonant. 일본 사람, E, 아니에요. Um, just pronunciation notes uh, once we get through every, everything. 중국 이 아니에요. 클래스 가 아니에요. So when you have um consonant ending word uh, and e as the subject marker, there are no spaces there. And I'm saying e ka after um, I, I pause between the noun and e. Um, to distinguish that it's e, not ka, but the way you should read it is not 선생님 e, 학생 e, 일본 사람 e. Uh -uh. You have to remember the liaison rule. 선생님 e, 학생 e. Um, this is zero value, ng sound, so um, just 학생 e, 일본 사람 e, 중국 e, so forth. It's not 중국 e, 일본 사람 e so forth. The final consonant uh, carries over for the liaison pronunciation rule. Um, again, um, you know, in simple yes or no questions, general questions and answers, you do drop these um, particles, iga, unnen, ullul, if it is, you know, understood without uh, you know, multi elements that are more complicated. Um, but in writing and formal speech, all of the particles has to be um, inserted. And uh, please have a look at Korean one lesson four PowerPoint slides, uh, 48 to 50 on the omission of particles, general questions, simple questions and answers, the particles are dropped. When you have a specific questions like uh, what, kind or what type, what's his name, things like that, you, you need to include the particles. Now, the topic particle, um, the easiest way to explain um, unnen versus uh, ika is unnen, it, what it does is what I would like to say, uh, it particularizes the the thing that you're talking about. It's, it's about that particular thing. That's why um, there's no, uh, it doesn't change the meaning whether you put unnen versus uh, ika, but it's like putting as for that thing in um, the translation. If the topic noun ends in consonant, you put un, otherwise uh, you use nun. Here we have two sentences. Steve Wilson un miguel saramieo. Steve Wilson un miguel saramieo. Steve Wilson is American. Um, Kim Yumi un hanguk saramieo, and Kim Yumi is American person. How is it different if you just say Steve Steve Wilson ni miguel saramieo, Kim Yumi ga 
한국 사람이에요. If you use subject marker, it's very general. Uh, Steve Wilson is American. Kim Yumi is uh, Korean. When you say Steve Wilson, un, it asks for Steve Wilson. So uh, you are making um, you're making the listener be aware. Like this, uh, pay attention. This is about Steve, nobody else. Okay, and I'm tr um, introducing a topic of our conversation or statement. Okay. And let's say these uh, sentences are, they come right after another. Um, after you talked about C. Wilson, you are introducing another topic of Kim Yumi. So, you know, that's why you are now um, also using topic particle to say, this is an introduction of another topic in um, the sentence. Um, Michael Jung is a Korean so as for Michael Jung, he's uh, Korean. 학교는 재미있어요. Okay, as for school, it's fun. Um, sometimes you use uh, you use topics if you're comparing and contrasting two things. We first talk about Amy. Amy는 한국 음식을 잘 먹어요. So what about Amy, you guys? She eats Korean food well. Jenny는 잘안 먹어요. Jenny는 미국 음식을 잘 먹어요. But now we are talking about Jenny. And as for Jenny, uh, she doesn't eat Korean food well. She eats American food well. So um, it's not just general statement that you're throwing out, Amy eats Korean food well, but you're introducing a topic because you are trying to contrast it with another topic. Xiaoming은 생물학을 전공해요. Xiaoming majors in biology. 저는 경제학을 전공해요. I major in economics. See? A, as for him, you know, as he does this, but then as for me, I do something else. So more contrast. 주소는 있어요. I have the um, snail mail, mail address. I have the um, the street address. Email an opsoil, but then I don't have the email address. Mira는 공부 잘 해요. 성격도 좋아요. I hope you didn't forget to. To means also it replaces the three major particles: um, topic, subject, and object. 은은 이가 and 을들. Mira, she studies really well. She um, and her uh, she also her personality is really nice as well is nice as well this is a good review from um korean 1 lesson 3 again uh to remind you it means like also as well to too um and it replaces completely replaces subject topic and object marker so it doesn't matter if the noun ends in consonant or vowel um you as we learn other um, particles and markers, you realize that to can be used, but it does not replace uh, some other particles. It can be, it can come right after those particles. Actually, a is one of them. So let's start uh, talking about numbers, reading telephone numbers. Um, in Korean, uh, you have to realize that there are two sets of number system. One is called Sino-Korean numbers, and this is the one um, that is easy to memorize. Sino-Korean, which means Sino means um, it, you know, is a prefix for um, Chinese origin, and this is all um, single monosyllabic um, word for each of the digits, and it's very systematic because when you know um, zero to nine, you can, um, you know the number already um, from one to 99, because how you say uh, after 10 is, um, if you wanted to say 20, it's 20, you just say 210 and that becomes 20. 30 is 310, so 30. 40 is 40 and so forth. So 99 would be 99. Zero is either 0, 
or young. Um, people get very confused. English speakers sometimes get confused because we say O for zero, but O in Korean is number five. And how you express, uh, you know, uh, telephone numbers is um, this phone number would be 유고삼에 dash is a e, 구이공 or 영에 일사칠팔. As I mentioned, there are two type of number systems in Korean: Sino-Korean numbers, and the other is native Korean numbers. We're going to learn native Korean numbers later because they are more challenging to learn. They're not, it's not very systematic. Like sign a Korean number, if you know 0 to 10, you know 0 to 99 because you can uh, put 20, 30, 40 together by saying 2 and 10, 3 and 10. Hundredth digit is pick, thousand is ton. And this is where the confusion starts. We say 100,000 and then we say 10,000, but they have a name for 10,000 uh, in sign of Korean number, which is man. And then after that, we say um, 100,000, but in Korean is 10, 10,000. And then pengman is a uh, million in English. Sino-Korean numbers are used usually for things like telephone numbers, number as identity, number like your uh, ID number, your phone number, your room number. It has nothing to do with quantity, but um, number as a concept. Uh, sometimes, yes, a few times Sino-Korean numbers are used for quantities, but they are rare. And I will address that when we get to um, the counting numbers, which is, uh, you know, mostly those cases you use the uh, native Korean numbers. This lesson um, will be, this particular um, portion will be to practice how to give and how to ask for and exchange phone numbers. So here's a sign of Korean numbers from one to 50. Uh, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20 is 20, 30, 40, 50 is 50. Just going to read a few random numbers. 13 will be 13. You have 10, 10, and 3, 3. 26. 2, 10 is 20, so 20, and 6 is you. 42. 4 is 4, 10 is 10, 2 is 2, so 42. Um, you notice, um, you know, if it's... Uh, you know, if you cannot, sometimes cannot distinguish um, because of noise, il and e, one and two can be easily confused. Sam and sa can be easily confused because it's just one um, syllable difference. That's the only, you know, few advantages the native Korean numbers have because it has a very distinct um, name sound for each of the numbers. And this is the the few of the um, flaws that sign of Korean number has because one and two can sound similar and three and four can be uh, sounding similar. So you can practice, uh, you know, reading, uh, counting from one to hundred in sign of Korean number. Ninety nine is kuship ku, and then hundred is pek. Um, you can watch the videos um, that I included um, on the PowerPoint to practice sino Korean numbers from 0 to 100 and um, 1 to 10 because, you know, uh, knowing um, 1 to 10 immediately give you um, insight into 1 to 99 and how to count 1 to 20 
uh, in sinocrine numbers. So let's practice reading phone numbers. This is our actual uh, LACC phone number. 323-9-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-
So the uh, oil form that we know um, is what's called a uh, present or uh, non-past tense. It can be uh, uh, oil can express things that is ongoing, um, quotidian, um, what's happening right now, as well as uh, in the future. Ulgeo, geo is sort of in the future that you will do something. Um, and you use this um, only in first person to express to the listener that something's gonna get done, okay? Uh, it means I'll do something, but it's volunteering, modest, and you express things like this to tell others um, that it will, to assure them it's going to get done. I promise it's going to get done. Don't worry. Um, it has to be first person. You have to be talking about what you are going to do. Um, 저는 커피를 마실게요. I'll drink the coffee. That's what it means. And as I expressed before too, um, in uh, English, we don't have these different sentence endings grammatically. We um, vary how things will be perceived or heard by, you know, intonation, um, inflection. We do um, different things. Like we, we can just say, I'll drink. There's a difference when we say, um, I'll drink the coffee versus I'll have coffee. Oh, I'll drink the coffee. You know, instead of just saying I'll drink it, when you pronounce, you know, when you say it the second way, like I'll drink the coffee, it kind of ex exaggeratingly, it means like, don't worry, I'll, I, it's going to get done. I'll finish the coffee, something like that. Okay. Uh, but in Korean, you don't have to do those exaggerated things because we have this. Uh, sentence endings that make sure how you know it's going to be heard or interpreted. We cannot say this for others. My question and copy it No, it's it's to it's from you to the um, listener directly, and it can't be used in a question or a proposal. This is a statement to tell somebody, "I will do it. Don't worry, it's gonna get done." 집에 갈게요. I'll go home. Don't worry. 집에 갈게요. Like you, because you're talking about yourself. There's no question. Uh, am I going home? No. It has to be a statement, and it is to assure um, the listener that something will get done. Linda, Mark, and Jenny—they're all at a restaurant. Linda um, asks, "우리 뭐 먹어요?" Mark is very excited. Wow, 우리 같이 갈비 먹어요. He proposes. Remember, our oil can be one of four things, you guys. Statement, question, if the yoga goes up and there's a question mark in the um, writing, or it can be proposal. 같이 먹어요, see? Let's all have kalbi together. Or it can be 먹어요, like you eat the kalbi, right? All four things. Here is proposal. Mark is like, let's all eat kalbi. Linda um, reminds Mark, Jenny doesn't really like kalbi. But um, Jenny is, uh, you know, she's nice. 괜찮아요. 같이 갈비 먹을게요. She assures, it's okay, I'll have kalbi with you guys. Okay. Um, so you kind of get the context. Uh, even if uh, Jenny, uh, it's not Jenny's favorite thing, she she's making um, everybody, you know, feel comfortable. Don't worry, it's going to get done. Not a big deal. Um, second example, Youngmi and Linda. Uh, Youngmi lets Linda know, 저는 오늘 아주 바빠요. I'm really busy today. And Linda then volunteers, 제가 집 청소할게요. I'll clean the house then, right? I'll clean the house. 고마워요, okay? Linda can just say, 제가 집 청소해요. And that sounds like it's not a response to young me. I clean the house. That's what it means. It's, you see the tone? I clean the house versus I will clean the house. It's a statement versus I'll clean the house. I'll clean the house. 
I'm letting you know that it's going to get done by me and you don't have to worry. And here's another more complex example. So you get the, the context of when uh, can be used. Steve um, notices, who's that woman? Jessica says, it's Mark's girlfriend. And Steve says, okay, that's fine. That's still okay. He goes over to Sandy, Mark's girlfriend, and he introduces himself. Excuse me. It's a stranger. They never met each other. So he uses a very ultra polite way of asking for a person's name because um, they never been introduced or met before. San Diego. 전화번호가 어떻게 되세요? And he uses the same um, parallel expression to ask her for her phone number. Uh, 우리 같이 데이트해요. See? Proposal. Uh, let's, um, let's go on a date. Okay. Later on, Mark confronts Steve. Steve, Sandy는 내 여자친구예요. Sandy's my girlfriend. And now what does Steve say? Oh, 그래요. 이제 안 만날게요. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I see. I won't meet her anymore. You know, I assure you, man. <laughs> 이제 안 만날게요. Um, I'm not going to meet her anymore. Instead of just 이제 안 만나요, which is like, um, I don't meet her. Like, it just flat. Like, it, it really sounds like he's trying to convince Mark or feel sorry that he's done that and like, hey, I won't do that anymore, I assure you. Like you have my word. Let's see how to, uh, let's practice how to conjugate things into this um, form. So um, you use this only with verb and if it ends, there are a few irregulars, but uh, here and there you can uh, take out the, um, ta from the dictionary form, and if it ends in a consonant, ulkeo. Otherwise, you put the rl the consonant under the base or the stem and attach keo. Chumbi hada would be chumbi. Halkeo. Salda, alda. All these real uh verbs and adjectives they're often irregular. 살다 would be, take a guess, 살게요. So you treat it like a vowel, but, but the deal is uh, already there, so you don't have to reattach again. 살게요. I will live. Um, 먹다, 먹을게요. I'll eat it. Don't worry. Um, I'll eat it. That's what it means. You know, there's a difference in English when you say, I'll eat it. I will eat. I'll eat it. There's a difference, right? Making uh, the tone tells uh, for the second um, version. Yeah, the listener, it, it, I'm telling the listener, like, don't worry. Okay, I I'll get that done for you. Anta, puda, pulkeo, I'll look at it. Anta, anjilkeo, I'll sit down. Okay. Ita, isilkeo, I'll stay here. Somebody says, 옷이 없어요. I don't have clothes. I don't have anything to wear. 같이 쇼핑할게요. 같이 쇼핑할게요. Don't worry, I'll shop with you. 뭐 마실래요? Coffee, juice, they give you choices. They're trying to serve you. And you don't want them to bother. So you can just say, 그냥 물 마실게요. I'll just have water. 그냥 물 마실게요, okay? So it makes you more, again, native-like. Instead of just saying, 그냥 물 마셔요, which is like flat, I just drink water. 그냥 물 마실게요. I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm just gonna have water. I, I don't want you to worry. You don't have to bother. 누가 설거지 할 거예요? Nobody likes to do the dishes, right? And like, who's gonna do the dishes? 제가 할게요. Very volunteering. I'll do it. I'll do it. Don't worry.
Okay, I volunteer. 오늘 오피스에 오세요. Somebody tells you and you respond. 네, 갈게요. Yes, I'll be there. Okay. How would you say, I'll buy it? You're going to treat somebody, you say, 제가 살게요. I'll get it. Again, in English, it will be a, there will be a difference if you say, I buy, I will buy, I will buy. Like, I'm just going to buy something versus I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll, I'll purchase this for us. 제가 설거지 할게요. 제가 설거지 할게요. I'll do the dishes. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to do it. Okay. Um, you tell the professor. I'll read it. 읽을게요. 제가 읽을게요. I'll read it. I'll call tomorrow. These are very commonly um, said uh, phrases. 전화 할게요. 내일 전화할게요. 이따 전화할게요. I'll call you later tomorrow. 학교에 가다 갈게요. 오늘 학교에 갈게요. I'll be on campus today. I'll go to campus today. So typically, um, you would go to a restaurant, Korean restaurant, and the server, the waiter or waitress would ask, 뭐 드시겠어요? 뭐 드시겠어요? What would you like to um, have? And as a, a customer, you, you know, give the order um, saying, 저는 짜장면 먹을게요, 라볶이 먹을게요, 떡국 먹을게요, 파닭 먹을게요. Um, I'll have this. I'll have that. Okay, to fulfill the order so they can take the order. Um, this is kind of a, a typical way in which um, the order is, is you know, um, asked and given. I'll have this. Okay, I'll order that. And um, we already learned the expression, um, 이름이 어떻게 되세요? Or 성함이 어떻게 되세요? Um, and uh, when you are um, requesting um, personal information from another person, it's very polite to ask with, instead of 뭐예요? What is it? 어떻게 되세요? What does it happen to be? 어떻다 means how. And uh, it's a very roundabout, indirect way of asking for uh, information, like what does it happen to be? Songham is the honorific noun um, of idem, name. And 주소, um, 주소는 주소가 어떻게 되세요? What does your address happen to be? Email, 생년월일 is birth, year, month, day. Um, 생신, sometimes we can use that. 생신 is um, birthday honorific. So uh, we will learn all these uh, expressions words later where uh, it's not just the verbs and the adjective that you use uh, in honorific form, but they're nouns that you use, usually the possession of somebody who's older, superior, for which you have to use a completely different noun. You know, names are idem. But when you are asking or referring to name of an older person, it is 성함. 신용카드 번호가 어떻게 되세요? What does your um, credit card number happen to be? Um, so 되다 is um, sort of the passive counterpart of the verb hada, which is very active. Hada is to do. Teda is to become, happens to be uh, very passive, okay? Teda uh, is present tense, but uh, the uh, expression tuesayo, uh could mean different things. Um, in the dialogue, um, you know, Amy says, ne tuesayo, uh, it means, Good, like she um, 
you know, she was able to input uh, Xiaoming's number in her phone. Yes, it's done. Okay. Um, that's what she's stating. But when you just say, uh, in response to somebody's question or offer, it could sound very sarcastic as in no thanks. Like, uh, it, it's, it's okay. That's a, that's what it literally means. It's like, um, it's already done. Okay. Sarah is asking James, James, she, who needs to say, do you have uh, money? Do you, do you have $5? And he's, she's using honorifics with him. Um, because, you know, it's asking of all things about money too. Uh, James, 아니요, 5센트 있어요. 5센트도 괜찮아요? And he says, no, I only have 5 cents. It's, you know, do you want the 5 cents? Is 5 cents still okay? And Sarah is is like, no, thanks. 됐어요. It's okay. That's what it means. 됐어요. Like, uh, it's not needed. Okay. Um, it, it literally, it means it's done. Like, um, it's uh, it's not needed. Okay. When you are asking um, about a person um, and their information, um, you say 성함이 어떻게 되세요? 전공이 어떻게 되세요? What does your major happen to be? 취미가 어떻게 되세요? What does your um, hobby happen to be? 고향 is one's hometown. 전화번호가 어떻게 되세요? But um, when you are asking about telephone numbers to these uh, services or institutions, they're not people, they're offices, uh, they're things. So you just say for these places because they're not uh, belong, they're not personal information belonging to a person, but these are places, okay? So you can just say, 경찰서 전화번호가 뭐예요? What is the, uh, you know, number to the police? Um, uh, 인권 상담 uh, 전화번호가 뭐예요? What is the um, phone number to the human rights uh, helpline? But when it is something that belongs to a person who is older or superior, like your boss, professor, you ask for these things in honorific. 성함이 어떻게 되세요? Instead of 이름, 전공이 어떻게 되세요? So forth. And um, lesson seven, uh, grammar number six, this is how we uh, express possession. There's a concept that I want to introduce, um, you know, in English, uh, we have uh we express possession uh mostly by saying my our your her it very it's very specific uh and um if it's a na uh it's a noun a proper noun we um have apostrophe s to um indicate that it belongs to that person in korean um we have the first person possessive pronoun, which is my, and yes, there's a um, the regular and then the um, humble counterpart, de te, to uh, you know express your possessions. Uh, first person um, plural possessive uh, pronoun uri is often used for um, something collective, which uh, might not, you know be thought of as collective in um, American or Western culture, okay? I'll give you some examples. So one is you might be the only child, but, and you might live alone in your house and the house is possessed, it's owned by you, but you say, 우리 집, 우리 부모님. I'm an only child, but I will refer to my parents as 우리 부모님. Like it's our uh, parents. Um, and when you invite people over, even if you're the only person who's living in the house and it's not um, owned by no one except you, you say, 우리 집에 오세요. Come to my, instead of come to my house, come to our place as if somebody else, uh, you know, is sharing their ownership. But 
it's because um we use that for uh family relations even let's say not just parents but siblings as well um this is one of the uh, bigger concepts of language that is tied to um you know culture um family members when you're referring to them we, we even if you're the only child you say uri uri halmani uri harabaji your grandparents uh and even if you're the only other sibling you say uh uri oppa because um these people are not just people to themselves but they um belong to a household a family so it's like he is a person of all of us of our family that's sort of the the concept or the idea um and for house home home is not where a person lives but home is a household uh it's where family resides um it we say um you know often when we invite people uri uri jib e oseyo or we one refers to one's house as uri jib even if you're the only person living there because again the the concept of chip is where a family lives that's from um the idea of um and the tradition of extended family where you live with your siblings and parents and other uh extended family and relatives also uh you don't say um dei hakyo my school even if you're the principal of that school president of that school you say uri hakyo uh it, because it's a, a communal place uh uri mal uri nara again um you know in in the song my country tis of thee but we we never say even if you're the president if you're the king if you never say de or te nara you say uri nara because those things places uh it's extended beyond one person okay um yeah you 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 always would say for the korean country you say uri nara instead of de nara okay um if other ideas come up i'll elaborate so my book de or te tik again like referring to yourself as uh tall or um te um in subject or uh topic please use the humble form again if you say the kids use this a lot especially at a certain age when they um start learning and um you know get the idea of ownership like deco they tech they they sangnangka my my toys things like that so te tech teko is like mine my thing call is thing but you cannot use by itself if there has to be a pronoun or uh non -mod modification in in the front St uh how you make things into um possession with pronoun very easy you just put the thing after that person's name you don't even have to put apostrophe s steve chingo means steve's friend uri oppa uri hong uh my or our older brother we don't know from um the context if uh if somebody says uri oppa um if there are other siblings besides you igo dugu gabangyeo whose bag is this there are two ways of answering that which is steve Goeo, Steve Goeo, it's Steve's, or Steve Gabangil is Steve's bag. Either either one is fine. Dugu Texangil, who's this? Is it Sansengnim Goeo or Sansengnim? it's the teacher's uh desk very easy you just have the um the person the person's title person's name and then um if you put the noun after it the noun is the object is belonging to that person as for the book whose is it linda 
거예요. It's Linda's. Linda 책이에요. It's Linda's book. 컴퓨터는 누구 거예요? 컴퓨터 누구 거예요? 내 거예요? Or 제 거예요? Or 내 or 제 컴퓨터예요. That's it for lesson uh, seven.